let's uh, go with this example. I just uh, draw it on the, you can see in between the tooling manipulators, just in case if you can see behind me. You see, we have uh, tooling manipulators, uh, simply we have distance between the end effector and the, the first joint, the second joint, and the third joint. The end effector is here actually. We are in this position in 3D space. And the distance between the links and the end effectors, we have dn plus 1 and an plus 1. And the second joint, we have a theta n plus 1 angle rotation. And the last joint, uh, we have alpha amount of rotation. And here, this line parallel to this one. This line parallel to this one and this one. So alpha n plus, uh, n plus one, alpha n, theta n plus one. So if you wanna calculate uh, your final position in 3D space, as you remember, you have to go through all these matrices, right? From your textbook, remember? And every time you rotate, then change your uh, coordinate, it affects on your end effector and your final position. And also you have translation as well. For this example, the question says find me the AM plus 1, which is actually translate and the distance is DN plus 1 and rotate it with respect to Z and the amount is theta n plus 1, right? times translate the amount a n plus 1, 0, 0 and it's turn X coordinate amount is alpha n plus 1. If you remember your textbook, we have something like this. Zero, 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 right? Let me check. Yeah. Oh, one zero, sorry. And this goes one, 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 like this, yes, and remember this is the last row is always zero, 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 one, and it goes up, right, and look, I have on the last one, D, M plus one, zero, zero, this is the first one, I guess, yes, and remember the rotation, matrices with respect to x, y, z. Remember, I just show it in the textbook. So, here c means cosine, s means sine, okay? And remember the, the last row, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. And here, oh, here, the Rotation is with respect to z, right? And the amount is theta n plus 1. So, I have my z here. 0, 0, 0, 0. Here, I have cosine and sine of theta n plus 1. Cosinus, cosine, theta n plus 1. Minus sine, 
theta n plus 1, sine theta n plus 1, and cosine theta n plus 1. So I'm done with this first part. So first thing, and the second one, with respect to x, so in here, everything is going 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, right? The identity, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And the last row is always 0, 0, 0, 1. So, look, x, y, z, right? So, a, m plus 1, 0, 0. What about rotation? Should be similar, but this time with respect to x, right? Yes. And so I'm keeping the x as 1, and rest of it 0. Right? 0, 0, 0. The last row, and it goes up 0, 0, 0, right? Here, my the first element is here, so I have to deal with this form, right? I'm taking off this and working on these four elements of the matrix. So 0, 0. Here I have the same one with yeah, C alpha n plus 1, S minus S alpha n plus 1, S alpha n plus 1, and cosine alpha n plus 1. And you have to deal with, oh, by the way, it's going to be what? T and M plus 1, right? M plus 1 respect to N. So, A, M plus 1 is going to be the answer of these four matrices. And each is 4 by 4. If you follow easy way, it will be like this, see? So I have just cosine theta n plus 1, and here minus sine theta n plus 1, 0, 0, 0. Then here, the second element, right? Second row, sine, cosine, zeros. And here I have 0, 0. 1 and 0 and then d will come as a coefficient ok so here let me write down can you, or if you want I can write down here so a m plus 1 should be Cosine theta n plus 1, sine theta n plus 1, and 0, 0. And make it like this. Good. And minus sine theta n plus 1, cosine alpha n plus 1, cosine theta n plus 1, cosine alpha n plus 1 sine alpha n plus 1 and 0 here sine theta n plus 1 and sine alpha n plus 1 minus cosine theta n plus 1 sine alpha n plus 1 cosine alpha n plus 1 and 0 and the last one could be a n plus 1 cosine theta n plus 1 a n plus 1 sine theta n plus 1 d n plus 1 and the last row always 0 0 0 1 right and those minuses actually comes from the sine right sine is alpha n plus 1 so you basically deal with all of these operations with just one line of code. Rot x 1 0 pi over uh, 30 times pi over 180, 30 degrees. Translation and rotation together. And which is actually Right? 
the tool our rotation and rotate supply over to it. And here our RPY to R 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 in a vector space. Okay. Here some textbook demonstrations. Okay. Remember I was telling you if you go to the, your toolbox, you will see all the simulating models. All the functions and simulating models here. Cursive, forward. So here, I'm just putting on my command window a cell drive point, which will open the drive point model in simulating library. Here we go. Then I just run it. And it solves, it uses 40, 45. I get some errors, that's fine, because I didn't change the parameters based on my needs. That's okay. But here, let me go back. This one. A simulating model for quadcopters. And you run it. It will be running for 20 seconds based on your model here and in your simulator, then the animation will start. Okay, for another <coughs> sorry, uh, <coughs> another demonstration for simply focusing on the vision, machine vision toolbox. Loading map one, which is already in the toolbox. Okay, I, I just load map, and then I have a bug object with a bug bug uh, function. Then I want to. Dr. Raz mentioned these are coming in the future lectures. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the demonstrations for 
these are actually from the uh, future lectures for your mobile robot platforms. And I want to reach the point 50 and 35, okay? And I want my bar start from 20 to 10. Here we go, follow the green line. So this is a preloaded, predefined map, the work environment, let's say a corridor, BSC building, okay? And here is, we are in the ACE lab. We start from here and try to reach uh, the elevators. We simply start from here, not elevators, they say AT building, right? We start from here, follow the L, and instead of going to taking the shortcut from here, we are taking the Dean office and follow the long way, passing by the elevators, then go outside and get across to the AAT building, and now we are in the AAT library. I'm telling this because it will be really important for your future lectures, which actually gives you the cost function. Uh, that way I can say, someone can say, okay, why didn't you follow this way? Right? why the bug went through all the way from long way instead of get, getting a shortcut from you. So this is based on your cost function. You will be studying on this as well. Yeah, zero, 
pi over 4 minus pi over 4, 0, pi over 4, 0. Pi over 4, pi over 4, minus pi over 4, right? Okay, then here is my, actually this is the coordinate for my <coughs> final destination for Puma 560. Let's say t equals to my vector p560 dot forward kinematic and I want to reach to qn, right? Here are my parameters. And then there is a new thing. Q, I say QI, you can say Q. QL. QI equals to P560 inverse kinematic and T. So I reach that QN point and I have my t here then I want to go back to my home position right, in the beginning and remember, these are my parameters t and this is my qn
and 90, right? So you can put your theta angle as negative, positive, zero, and positive, right? So I have negative, zero, and positive. And also, your theta, based on your linearization, your theta can be between uh, negative and zero. So, it could be a really large negative and small amount of negative angle. So, you can take as a sinus theta, as a theta. So, in that case, you can say, I have large negative, medium negative, negative, zero. Or, let's say, small negative. Then small positive, medium positive, and large positive value of theta, the radian value. So that's how you can construct your membership functions. For example, in here, let's say we have three membership functions. Just cut it here. I have here positive, this membership function is positive. And zero, I have zero here, okay? And negative. And what? Can you tell me what is? It? What should I put it here? Zero, okay. What about here? Based on theta. What? Come on, this is the zero and one, right? Your theta is here. These are your membership functions. Based on your theta angle, you will see the half 0.5 of negative, 0.5 of zero. The value, not the zero and negative sign. The value. Okay? So if you are here, let's say you are you have 0.4 membership function 2 and plus 0 0.6 membership function uh, 1 this is your value for your theta angle ok that was a short introduction for oh, also you can choose the different style of the membership function here I use triangle you can use uh, triangle trapezoid right you can use Gaussian you can use triangle and you can use different type of Gaussian function as well ok in MATLAB I just say type fuzzy yes. I just type fuzzy and here we go Here is my input, here is my membership function, it says untitled but the default is memdani and my output. So based on these two, I will have my output, <coughs> I will put in my function. So for this, just say file, new, Memdani or Sumiano? You choose Memdani. Okay. Then edit. Add variable. Input. Now I have to input, right? So for your homework, I have theta and what? Theta dot, right? I have theta and theta dot. Or you have theta and position. In this case, your position will be derivative of your angle, for example. So, then, double click, uh, membership function 1, say theta, for example. And based on your calculations, you have to decide your parameters here and the range. The range is here 0, 1, but maybe for your uh, theta angle it will be uh, 
zero one, but you're taking the, the values between zero and zero point seventeen or sixteen. Then you have to decide these parameters, and based uh, from your homework, you can say for theta, uh, small theta values, uh, let's say uh, twenty degrees, ten degrees, right? Sinus should be equal to the the value of radian of sinus theta. And in that case, it should be like 0 0.17 or 16. Let's say, start from 0 0.17, go to 0, and finish at 0 0.3, and enter. Invalid parameter and vector because I'm here. So, I should change it this because the this number is here. See the peak. For this, just keep it uh, 0 0.4. Uh, so it, it ends goes this way, okay? Minus 0 0.4. I can say 0 0.2. It makes the peak start decreasing at zero. Okay, I'm fine. And 0 0.4. I can change this as a 0 0.2. Enter. Here we go. Then memory should function too. You can say double click. Uh, I say theta. Theta. Oh, sorry. Here I should say negative. Right? My input is theta. So negative. Here, make it small negative, right? Same as n. And again, here you can play with this. I can start it from zero, make it pick on zero point, I have zero point nine, make it zero point forty five. Okay? Enter. Here we go. And this one. Let's change it to negative, small negative, zero. And my zero membership function starts at 0 0.35, uh, 45. And it makes the peak at 0 0.8. And ends at 1.2. And enter. So it goes this way. So. Larger than 0.9, I always say zero. Force on your angular velocity. So, input. And rules. Okay, let me put this something. Uh, we can keep it as a default, okay. And output can be say a default, okay. Now, uh, edit at cut and FIS properties. Here we go. And rules. These are my fuzzy rules. Okay? See, I have negative and my second input here and my output here. So here I'm going to do if and then rules. If input 1 is negative and input 2 is MF1, I can say uh, small negative, then my output is MF2, for example. And add rule. If my input 1 is N and my uh, input 2 is MF2, then my output one is MF1. Okay? And so on. And then play with small negative. Oh, yeah. MF1, add rule. And most of the time for your uh, homework assignments, four, uh, two, four, uh, eight rules will be enough. Okay? And you can also change n 
and OR operators here, which will give you the maximum value of membership function, take as the maximum value, or minimum value, based on your operator OR and N. And say close. And here, my FIS, let's say view, surface. If I say rules, here my rules. If I say surface, I will see this. This is my fuzzy uh, function illustrated as a surface, as a matrix. So if it's a zero point, if it's theta close to zero point seventeen, take sin, the sinus theta as a theta value. If it's larger than uh, sixty degrees, take as zero and apply negative force. If it's smaller than zero, uh, uh, take the angle as a theta value and apply positive force which actually doing this oh, let me try to drive here either you're using a cart or free pendulum it doesn't matter let's say you have a cart here and your pendulum is here so if you pendulum your rod uh, willing to move this way so you should do what? you should apply a force on this angle, right? that direction. How can you decide this? Simple, because you have your theta. Right? If your theta is larger, well, let's say take this way positive and negative, uh, positive and negative. If your theta is negative, uh, large, you should apply negative force. Okay? Negative positive. You should apply negative force. If your theta is uh, positive, you should apply negative uh, positive force to this direction. I make it like this. And this is your force. This is your mass, right? That's how you decide. And you can see it here. These red lines will be going through between these triangles and based on these inputs you will decide your output which is in this case your force right? for example here uh, members here for uh, my fourth rule is in between that area and the corresponding input for this rule 4 is here so I'm fine and my input will be zero. So which is in this case my pendulum is in balance. If it was a little bit right, a little bit left, I should apply it to a force based on my value, either neg in a negative direction or positive direction. And you can add this as uh, from workspace. You can add your, if you're working on simulating, you can add fuzzy controller in your simulating model that you actually studied previously in homework one. You can add fuzzy controller instead of your PID controller and you can re-simulate your system. And you can call those values or send those values to your workspace. Export to workspace. Okay? Then you can say pendulum 1 or inverted pendulum. Once you have from your simulating model, once you have your values, the parameters based on your uh, system dynamics, uh, your fuzzy controller can deal with and decide the, the direction of the force. And you can call them from your workspace and import your simulating model. You, you can always stop by at ASLAB. You can send me email for regarding your homeworks, the projects, and 
So far, I just say a couple of students stop by and ask questions. I mean, don't be shy. And I'm always in the A's lab. And uh, otherwise, just shoot me an email. We can find a nice time slot. Not after 6 or 7, of course. <laughs> uh, early morning through 5 p.m. Uh, you can find me in ACE or we can meet at GPL. Alright, see you next week then.